Hi, everybody. Michael Feinstein here at the Great American Songbook Archives. And it's, as always, so much fun to share all of this material with you. And today we are looking at the formidable legacy of Judy Garland. Judy Garland has been inducted into our Great American Songbook Hall of Fame. And all of this year and next year and beyond, we will be celebrating Judy Garland because her contribution to American popular music is singular and important. Most people think of Judy Garland as a movie star or think of her uh, as uh, one of the great live entertainers having performed over 1,500 live concerts later in her life. Uh, but her influence on American popular music must not be underestimated, and that's why she's an important part of our Songbook Hall of Fame, because she introduced so many songs that were created for her by the greatest uh, composers and lyricists of her time. And she helped to make many, many songs what we call standards, songs that are still sung and heard and loved today. Uh, most notably, of course, the song Over the Rainbow, which she introduced in the 1939 MGM film The Wizard of Oz. We have a lot of artifacts of Judy Garland here in our collection. And this uh, set of uh, rather fragile pieces of uh, paper in front of me are called lobby cards. These were displayed in uh, movie theaters when a particular film was uh, playing in uh, any given movie palace. And traditionally, lobby cards were made in a series of eight. They made eight cards that had scenes from all of the different movies, and then one of the cards was a title card. And this is from her last film for MGM, Summer Stock, in which she sang uh, the Harold Arlen, Ted Kohler song, Get Happy. And it became an iconic moment in her career and also, sadly, the last film that she made for MGM. She had made 28 films for them and was fired after finishing this film because they felt that she was unreliable. Uh, but she later went on to have greater fame and acclaim when she decided to return to her roots of, of live performing. So these lobby cards are a moment in time from 1950. Uh, this is a lobby card from the film Words and Music, which was a 1948 film in which she made a guest appearance singing two songs. And this photograph is Judy with a very young Liza Minnelli taken on the set of the film Words and Music when Liza came to visit. So Liza would have been about two and a half years old or something around there. And this is an original print with uh, MGM publicity information on the back. And these... Um, photographs are quite extraordinary because they were distributed uh, to theaters and to newspapers and such. And they're such high quality prints that they now go on auction sites for a great deal of money. So we're very lucky to have a lot of these. This captures another important moment in Judy Garland's life. It's when she married her uh, second husband, Vincent Minnelli. Uh, and this is um, a picture from their wedding. And this gentleman uh, on, on the right, my right, is um, Louis B. Mayer, who was the feared head of Metro-Goldwyn-Mayer Studios, uh, watching over eagle-eyed as two of their most important commodities at MGM were uh, becoming betrothed. Judy, of course, as a film star, and Vincent Minnelli being one of the star directors at MGM. This is another photograph from MGM uh, taken on the set of her 1948 film, The Pirate, directed by Vincent Minnelli, celebrating the birthday of Walter Slezak, who uh, I met many, many, many years later, uh, who was a, a charming man. He played a villain in this, in this movie. This is from the 1950s, when Judy Garland had returned to live performing. And this is a souvenir program that was sold at the different venues where she performed, not unlike the uh, the things that they still sell at concert venues today. And um, it chronicles uh, her life up to that point in movies. And in the back, it shows her children, uh, her three children. And it says the Luft family, because by that time, she was married to the producer, Sid Luft, who produced her film, A Star is Born, in 1953. And it trumpets in this program how she was um, conquering the medium of television, that she had just done a television special in color, which was a big deal because very few people had color televisions in 1955 and 56 when she did her, her special. Uh, these compact discs are also rarities. And I say that because this compact disc, Judy Garland, the London Studio Recordings, even though it was issued many, many years after her passing, 
contains recordings that remained unreleased until this set was issued, where a very enterpri enterprising producer in London went back into the vaults in the United Kingdom and found unreleased recordings of Judy Garland, which are quite extraordinary. So this compact disc set is uh, a very important collectible in the uh, history of Judy Garland's recorded legacy. And these are other compact discs that have equally interesting uh, additions to them. This set has recordings that she made in the 30s and 40s for Decca Records, but it also includes alternate unreleased takes that can only be found on this disc. So sometimes things that come along later, long after a performer has passed, uh, become equally important for those of us who want to document a career such as Judy Garland's. We also have from the collection of a great musician, jo Gordon Jenkins, uh, many of his orchestrations and other ephemera related to his career. Gordon Jenkins was a successful songwriter, writing songs like P.S. I Love You and This Is All I Ask and other standards, and also uh, worked a lot with Frank Sinatra and Peggy Lee and Nat King Cole and Judy Garland. And he created a whole, um, I guess I'd call it a musical tone poem, where he uh, wrote this piece called The Letter, which is a story in song and dialogue, completely written by Gordon Jenkins. He wrote the music, he wrote the lyrics, and he did all the orchestrations for The Letter. And this is an original LP issue of The Letter. And originally, there was affixed to this part of the cover an actual letter that somebody must have torn off and, and, and kept. So this was an experiment in creating a different kind of musical experience. And we have the entire set of orchestrations, conductor score and such, for the letter here in our archive. So one could actually recreate the entirety of the letter. And that is significant uh, not only because it's related to Judy Garland, but a lot of Gordon Jenkins' uh, music was destroyed in a fire at his home in Malibu in the mid-1980s. So most of his music was lost and does not survive. So to have these precious pieces of what survives of Jenkins' musical legacy is quite significant, and one can only find them here at the Great American Songbook Foundation. So uh, we preserve the legacy of Judy Garland as we do so many other personalities because we understand that the history of America is told through music and told through entertainment. And it's a fun way to learn about history. And if you want to learn more about our Songbook Hall of Fame and the archives, please visit us online at thesongbook.org. I'm Michael Feinstein, and thanks for spending time looking at the legacy of Judy Garland.